Well, what's the crack, everybody? How are you getting on? What? How are you? What? You're all very welcome to Bookshot, episode 177. Hmm. What's the crack, everybody? How are you doing? It is, as I'm recording this, Thursday, the 11th of March, 2021. That'll be for the Patreons. They'll get it out in a couple of minutes. Just recording this little intro. Just say hello. Yeah. Um. Yeah, why not? You know, it's figured it's a nice thing to do. I'm getting it out early. Ad-free version. You know the crack. That's how you become a Patreon. You jump on. A minimum three doll hairs. Shout out to the fucking legends that have upped their fucking their out their output their contribution to it. Minimum three dollars. You know you're all in at that stage, and there's people out there like Brian and whatnot. And I'm sure there's a couple more that I have, I I need to give a shout out to. Uh, you know just open open it because they figure it's worth it to them. That is beyond sound. Thank you very very much. Fair fucking lady. Somebody bought some gear as well from the the merch shop. Yeah. The old fucking merch shop there, which you will see in the show notes if you're down below. It helps contribute to the podcast. Again, I wish they'd tell me where or who was after buying it, but you just get a notification to say, you made a sale. I haven't made a sale. They've made a sale. Trust me. But it is nice to know that people are contributing to the podcast and they're fans of the show and all the rest. Somebody bought some t-shirts and stuff like that. So let me know. Send me an, uh, an old fucking screenshot, an old selfie. Why not? It's, uh, it's a nice fucking thing to do because... It lets other people know that there is actually a thing called Buckshot out there. Fair fucking plenty. I didn't get a chance to do a ramble pod this week. Oh, it was just a busy... It actually was a busy week. Busy week we had to... Um, I'll explain next on next week's podcast, really. The next, next week's ramble pod. It was just a busy week. But, you know, we managed... We pumped out a good old Tom and Jerry show. It was out on Monday. And we had a live... A live ramble pod last Sunday night. So shout out to the fucking Patreons that jumped on board there. A couple, I, people were trying to get in. Um, I wasn't sure who it was. EM came up on a thing at one stage and said, "My phone is shit in the bed here. I can't." You know, and I fucking, I, 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 I don't know if there's a better way. Zoom seems to be the one, the most stable out of all of them. And I know there's ones where you can just watch, like a voyeur through whatever means. But I'll be honest with you, lads, through my professional experience in the last couple of weeks and all the rest of it keeping it simple through the one channel is the way to go and I understand if people you know maybe people don't want to come on to camera or whatever but it's not a, it's really it's it, for the next one I'm going to do in the next uh, probably fortnight it's it's way more chill than that it's way more chill than that you don't have to say a thing or contribute in any way if you don't want but it's it's great because to be fair with you the, the, the standards the standard uh, patrons that do come on you know who you are they're part comedians themselves anyway, you know, to it, and it snowballs into just a proper old natter, like a pub natter. That's really what it's like. I know I call it the Royal Rumble or the Royal Ramble, but it's, it's like a pub natter and everybody is given the right amount of time. It's actually a, the most mannerly fucking thing. And you can chime in whenever. It's great. It's just great. So thank you very much for jumping on board with that. I didn't record it to put it out. I just kind of, th- I thought, well, you know, it's it's just a cool thing just to have. I know I, I'm in the whole business of podcasting and all stuff and recording things for time and memoriam, but it is sometimes cool to just, the conversation's gone. It's gone. And it's purely a thing in a memory after that. You know, I think there's something cool about that. So it made it a bit more personal. And also like when things aren't getting recorded, you can say whatever you want, you know, and chances are, even if it was recorded, the things that were being spoken about would never have been picked up regardless anyway. But it was... It's well worth joining in the next one. I'm going to do another one in the next fortnight or so. But yeah, have been busy this week. Hmm. So I'll fill you in the whole lot the next day. Um, Jesus, yeah, I've been, I've actually did a gig in Everton since I talked to you last. <laughs> Would you believe that? Fucking fella sitting on dead horses, royals, fucking talking to Oprah. It's all kicking off, lads. <laughs> Is it? Fuck. Could I give a shit about it? <laughs> the weirdest thing for me in the whole last time I was talking to you is that I found a bar of chocolate that had drumstick goo in it from Squishies. Yeah, my review on that will be coming up next week. Um, Listen to me like a proper fucking YouTuber. My review on it is coming up next week. Sweet Jesus, Mary and Joseph. I have been putting in place, I've been busy this week, but I have been putting in place um, transferring all the program that we designed and built for Sideshow to the new computer. I've managed to kind of do that. I need to reconfigure it a small bit more. But 
that was that was my biggest. I'd be honest with you, I was kind of shitting it, going, "Ah, fuck! You don't want to be bothering Gordo either with the fucking thing, you know." So we built this program that will allow us to put people's photos in, put you know media in, and all that. But it's I've more or less have it now. I was able to import it from the the, the old laptop into this one. So sideshow, uh, I would say, yeah, hopefully in the next mm, ten days or so, we should be hopefully going for a recording. I have. I have all the fucking media set there waiting for a couple of shows. It's just purely the daunting fact, because I'm not a computery techie bloke, the daunting fact of just fucking... Really, do you know what? I The way I can shame myself into it is call myself a lazy bastard, because anything's fucking learnable. You can fucking get after anything and make a half-decent effort of it. I think in these current climate, nobody gives a fuck. They just went, come on, give us some silliness. So it's, uh, yeah... I would say the next 10 days. And that's me saying it out loud to actual people. So that means I have to do it. I have a note here written in, in bright red saying Buckshot Sideshow has to be continued. We'll be back in the fucking pig's back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, moving along to today's guest. You know the crack anyway. Look, before I go any further, you know the crack. If you want to become a Patreon and help the podcast, you'll get to see today's live video. You get a live video, get to see the video of today's show, and also you get early access to ad free content. And you get in on the live, the live pit, fucking Royal Rumbles. You know what I mean? To have a natter and a chat with some normal human folk who are out for a bit of crack and not a bunch of fucking sappuccinos like the rest of the world is right now. That's where it's at. So that's the benefits of being a Patreon. And you contribute to the podcast. So my thanks to everybody for your continued support. Fair play, and thanks very much. Now, like I said, moving on to today's guest. Great, great, great friend of mine. He's been on the Sideshow. He's been on with me before. He's one of... I get such great... Play- one of the things I miss about going to an actual pub is going to a pub with somebody like Marshy. The guy is 100% positive. He's always got loads of funny shit to talk about. He always puts me in good form. And it's no harm, you know, if you are going into a rough pub having a friend who's six foot five. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Although Paul keeps on forgetting that he's six foot five, he's an absolute fucking champion. He's king of the puns and the one liners. Follow him on all the platforms. Enjoy the brilliant Paul Marsh. Paul Marshy Marsh and the Funky Bunch. What's the crack? Welcome back for your second time back in Bookshot. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me back. I'm chuffed. Uh, uh, t- two legends of the game of various games that is. But I had uh, uh, Dennis Fogarty on last episode. He's from Cashel, and he, uh, Stone fucking mad bastard. He played. For, he played for Munster. Um, obviously, you know, you just played being really fucking tall. We were just just before we were talking. Actually, Paul Paul was describing a fella that I played hurling against. He goes, big, t- big tall lad. <laughs> I, I, I always see that other lads as tall, especially if they're skinny. Uh, I, I, I yeah. only ever notice, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. I, I, I forget that I'm tall, and I, and when I get my <laughs> photograph taken, when I get my photograph taken, especially at the white, and they look at me and go, and then I go, oh, jeez, yeah, I am actually tall, uh, or they'll have a big head. Yeah, but any, you... I know, I know you put up the video on Patreon. I have a massive head, uh, you but do, I get away but with it because it would be I have ridiculous. A, I have a big frame. If my head was on your shoulders, you'd look like <laughs> yeah. you'd look like the fell at the end of Beetlejuice, you know, and he gets his fucking. <laughs> I, I, I went. I my first job was security in Dublin, and I remember they gave me the hat was seven, seven and seven eighths, which is one of the biggest ones you can get. Like it's just a massive head. It's, and I remember going in for getting a haircut one time, which I could definitely do it at the moment. And it's a friend of mine, Dave, who who has the barrows, and I, I said to. Him, Keep it just a tree blade on the side. Don't go too sharp because I have a big head. You probably wouldn't notice. And he goes, "Oh no, you would." <laughs> I was like, That's the nicest like, thing ever. Thanks, like, oh no, you would. Dave, <laughs> I should be cutting. Have you heard of customer service? <laughs> Shout out so, to yeah. Dave's the honest barber. Yeah, yeah, let's listen, man. You can't talk to anybody about fucking having. You can't talk to me about fucking bad haircut days. I've just gone. I don't know what's happening here. Although, do you know what? It's part. It's become almost. It's become a, a thing now. The fact that I have it's, a mullet. It suits you. I saw um, I saw a thing during the weekend. Uh, you were doing a gig for Russian Dove, and I saw it from the profile, from the back. I've oh, only yeah. been talking to you on Zoom and all. And, and yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah. I suppose it's it's it's, it's fuller than I imagined it was. You know, it looks the business. You know, it's changed your whole. 
you, you look like something out of Game of Thrones or something. But I, you know, like, I, last night I got from Jeremy Bright. I was on with Jerry, and Jerry went, uh, "You look like you look like Le- <laughs> Legolas from Lord of the Rings after the wife <laughs> the wife has taken the kids from you." <laughs> And he has a drink problem. And he has a drink problem. And he probably smokes too much too as well. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But I mean, yeah, I, I mean, that's that's the optimum, you know, middle age, heading for middle age look is that if I can look like a fucked up elf, gorgeous elf, then I'm, that's a win for me. That, I see, I have to keep my hair fairly short in work, right? So I only let the wife near the, the back and sides. But I'm at the top. I don't know what I'm doing. Really. You've got yeah. a bit of Grandpa Munster going on. Do you remember the Munsters years ago? They hit the oh, fucking yeah, yeah. The, the old like, salt and pepper on the sides. Polly from The Sopranos. When I was getting married, um, they they appeared right, and uh, I dyed my hair for the wedding. You did not, and and I, I got eczema all over my shoulders, right? And uh, I thought it was stress from the wedding, and uh, we went to honeymoon and all, and I obviously stopped dying and it kind of eased off. And I definitely thought I was stress from the wedding. But then about a year or two later, I went to the Black Rock Clinic for this uh, highfalutin um, allergy uh, test. Al- oh, allergy right. test. Yeah, yeah, Did yeah, I tell yeah. you? Yeah. No. You to do you to do a blood test of uh, one of food, and then they stuck these pads on your back, and um, there was a bit of everything in it. And there was a thing called PPD. It's in ink, right? And people who are really allergic to this can't even read a newspaper. So uh, <laughs> she said. You want to leave them on your back and come back in three days. And I came back three days later and I was like the hunchback in Notre Dame. I had this big mask. And she said, why didn't you take off the patch? And I said, well, you you told me not to. <laughs> and turns out I mean, <laughs> it was PPD. So I, I, I realized I was allergic to PPD. But uh, my sisters had a touch of eczema and a whole lot. And I told them and they realized they were allergic as well. So... They all so have to uh, PPD is in is in hair dye. It's it's yeah it's it's a sharp it's a big long word uh, and, and but PPD is what they call it, and and it's in hair dye it's in loads of stuff and you know the other thing, I used to do gigs when I started off comedy gigs and like all comedians I was I would write my set on the yeah, back of my yeah, hand, yeah. and then when I would come home I would be scratching my hand and I again I thought that's just the nerves from getting up on stage but it wasn't it was bloody ink. Was, you know, uh, that's that's interesting you say that because I'm just after having a fucking realisation and epiphany. I think I might yeah. be possibly slightly allergic too because I definitely got got uh, eczema or eczema. As See this, I, I'm like, I, I'm the, the, the diagnosing paramedic. This, this is, is here. incredible. I, I'm going to get my own show, my own podcast where we can just come on. <laughs> You'd be like the just the, the random shit that people would be typing in and Google gone. My fucking teeth feel funny. Uh, let's yeah. log on with Dr. Paul and see what he's saying. <laughs> I, I, I'm, um, it's gas like in the last year, in the last year, um, normally when you're on an ambulance, you kind of, um, not that you're fucking you fly the and not on it. Jesus Christ, you must yeah. have mental <laughs> well, on top we, of the thing. <laughs> we always say you're on the ambulance tonight because you know the way you can be on a fire engine. It's, uh, uh, but, uh, uh, and everyone hates being on, oh, I'm on the ambulance, you know, this kind of thing. But, um, in the last year now, it's actually, it's been totally different where, uh, normally you collect someone, pick them up off the street, whatever it is, cut them out of their car and get them to hospital as fast as you can. It's been the last year, the whole job has changed where you're actually going in and chatting to people. And <laughs> like, even like two out of three people wouldn't even come to hospital. There's loads of people kind of ringing us because they just basically didn't know what to be doing. Yeah. You know, so they've the whole family have got COVID. Usually this is the case, right? The whole family would get COVID and everyone was grand except for one of them. Who was in bed for three days and they were right. looking at the examples and thinking oh shit what, I, what do we do here about a call now and basically you're just coming in having a chat with them and consoling them but it's ghastly you're, you're actually having i don't this sounds weird but you're having great crack <laughs> people, you know <laughs> well it makes a difference with fucking scraping lads off the fucking road in temple bar and the fucking I, know, Friday, I, Saturday haven't, night. I, I haven't seen a drunk person in a year on an ambulance which like that's normally she's gonna have to ring Friday you up night. tomorrow night just locked just to fucking help you out like <laughs> Friday or Saturday night, uh, if you don't like get like we used to have this saying that if you went to a road traffic accident after midnight and nobody on the scene was drunk, keep looking because there's someone missing. You know, right. that's the kind of like standard practice. It's just drink accounts for and so all of a sudden when drink and pubs and everything is closed, people are saying to us like, Oh, you must be flat out like with COVID. Well it's not because COVID has replaced all the other stuff that lockdown has got rid of. So you're just you having know? nice chats with people inside in their houses. Yeah, taking it. Well, you kind of have to because you have to go in and do all their stats and the whole lot. So have I, you I, to go in in full hazmat like something out of that movie? Oh yeah, 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 
Yeah. So you're wearing these big plastic things, and you know, like I'm a, I'm a fairly big guy. These things how, are. How many did they put together for you to make you? They're, de- they're designed for the strap to go around the back and then bring it around the front and tie it in front of you. But I can't do that. It only goes around the back. I've actually learned how to tie it around the back. I can tie my shoelaces behind my back now at this stage, right? And then you have a mask <laughs> and a shield, and, and then you double glove. That's the most important thing, because there's a, there's a way of putting these things on. And it's like uh, Hulk Hogan, you know, when you come out. Um, so you take off a set, a set of gloves, right, because they could be contaminated. Yeah. And then the ones that are underneath are and, and then you rip everything off on the side of the road. And roll it up and into a plastic bag without touching it. It's oh, it's 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 a uh, it's a business. It's uh, learning new tricks as we go. You know. Jesus Christ! I never even considered that. Yeah, because you're yeah, you had some fucking mental stories, and I mean, you couldn't even fully tell me the stories, but it was like yeah, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, like ne- like, but and you would make them sound almost jovial, but really, I'd be hearing the most horrific thing ever. So now you've just uh, gone from fucking. What are the lads in we, the fire brick for, actually that, on a fire engine doing? Is have you seen any fires and like, shit? I'm probably on the Amazon maybe one out of every two, one out of every three nights maybe I might be on the Amazon. So when I'm not then, it's still the same. We're not getting as many road traffic accidents or whatever, but we're still getting loads of uh, fire alarms. And the other thing lately now is around Christmas, chimney fires, because people just weren't, you know, Opening in all the, all the wrapping, like all the yeah. wrapping, straight up the chimney, yeah. That's it, yeah. And, and the briquettes and the whole lot, then getting it all going, things are cold, all thrown the and the fire hasn't been used in months you know so but, but, oh, it's still the same old stuff you know but um and you, then as well as that because we're all paramedics sorry because we're all paramedics they were sending fire engines as well to cases you know so it's, oh, it's good that we can do that you know yeah yeah I, yeah you could see it all right but that, that's very fucking dramatic isn't it when a fire engine turns up and you just have and, a they, and, touch and of people order. don't know. And every time people go, "Oh, it's the ambulance we're looking for," I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, we're all paramedics. Don't worry about it." Yeah, we've got enough gear in the back. We got bandages and loads. It's fine. Yeah. So it's a, I, I, a thought just came into my head. Uh, it's like, hey, hey, if you've just tuned in, this is Buckshot, the comedy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> We we're talking about COVID and people on Amazon. Trust me, I mean, I had a flat earther on a couple of weeks ago. This is. <laughs> I saw that. I saw it. That yeah, was on he's well worth it, man. I must. Yeah. But clear, uh, see, it seems you brought up the subject. I just think it's gas now at the moment. But uh, the, in the last year, like the the, the conspiracy theories oh, on Facebook, like, oh, and you name it, and it's just feeding into it. Now I always say, I always said this: what, like, you know yourself, lads. You'd be kind of looking at lads, you know, through their twenties and mid thirties, and we're all getting married and stuff. And lads are still rocking it single, you know. And you're kind of going, oh. yeah, yeah. And there's a bit of you going, yeah, that'll be still a big class. But Paul, you know in the back of your head, every heterosexual man needs a fucking woman. You fucking <laughs> it gets to a point of weirdness where you're head- tell the cop on himself. Yeah, yeah, like or at least to keep you inside. You know those like those lanes that have come up when you when you're a young fella playing bowling, they'd come up the yeah. sides. Well, you see, I, I figure when a fella hits about forty two or forty three and there's no woman on the scene, like at that stage he's fucked about seven balls down the lane and they've all gone into the gullies at the side, like, and he's hitting knocking yeah. down the, and at this stage he's gone absolutely fucking squirrely, but at least he would have had the pub or something, some social outlet to go down and meet other fellas like that, you know, yeah. or the mark or some fucking thing. But instead now all they have is the internet and now you've other mad cunts on the internet and the internet is just, a, it's just, a, 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 you know, it's a fucking an agar jar or fucking dish you know, Petri dish for just crazy. It's, it's just, it's, just it's bringing them all out. Oh, sure. Your man, like that, that, that flat earther, he had a t-shirt on and I, I didn't get a chance to actually draw him down on it. Cause he was just me trying to keep the laughing in was, um, he had a t-shirt on. Cause there's no point in challenge these lads. Cause he is staunch, staunch fucking into this flat earth, like to stone mad. Yeah. Honest to God, where he, where he was going with it. But he had a t-shirt on that said, uh, COVID nineteen dash eighty four. It's like oh, for the love of Jesus, like you know. Well, do you know the one that gets me is that they they were all um, going on about how it's a hoax, right? Mm. And that the, the so the nurses and the doctors and the paramedics are we're all, all in on it. Yeah, to, yeah. We're all in on it, right? So Bill Gates is sending us memos that the, <laughs> the the lizard kings are happy with our progress so far. You know this kind of shit. Like, and yet these people like I, I can see their Facebook, and then I will pass them, and they're slouching. Oh, hey, Paul, be like. 
what, what are you like, you're on yeah. Facebook saying that this uh, on full of shit? What, like, you know, <laughs> it just it makes no sense. It's, it it's is not, it? But come here, what you were saying there about the, the, the I used to live, I had my own place, and I, I was single till I was I met Sharon when I was 35. But I met her at a wedding, and I used to always do well at weddings and other events where I was wearing a suit because, other than that, my sense of dress was just ridiculous when I look back on the show. <laughs> But, but, I but you, you know any fella who wears a suit to work i remember this when i was in in the buildings because you i and i was making a few pounds i remember and w- i was fucking kind of st- there was a period there for about five years paul where i was kind of stylish kind of at least the stuff right. out of good gear like. before i met you yeah oh no listen i went to shit hell the handbag it came <laughs> it came to a point where it was like there's no point with this but there was a about four i was a stylish but i was i was wearing good clobber like yeah, um, yeah. i was single too so i was like but I remember seeing the lads that I was friends with, like on who they wore a suit all week, yeah. and come the weekend, lad, they they show up in the fucking pub for a night out now in Cork, like, and you're going, what are you fucking wearing, man? I yeah. I, I hate to pull a fellow up on what he's, you know, in fashion, but where the, f- why are you wearing white socks with your jeans, man? This isn't 1982. Where are you going? And it's just, uh, my, my, it, wear the best of suits all week, and then come fucking Friday evening, it's just no control at all over himself. I had no color coordination whatsoever. I had it was boots and and, and jeans, but the jeans would have been like uh, Wrangler jeans. No offense to Wrangler jeans or whatever, but the stuff that it, they don't look well on a fellow my size. You know that kind of way. They don't look. And then I, I had a thing. I remember went through a phase where we were thinking for, for uh, really loud pinstripe trousers, and then I had no was into didn't. loud shirts. Yeah, pinstripes trousers are supposed to make people look tall, Paul. You must have looked yeah. like you. <laughs> Jesus Christ, wear horizontal stripes, man, for the love of well, Jesus. I, I, li- I lived by myself. I had my own house in, in Dublin. I bought a house because my sister's an auctioneer. She, she said, buy a house, buy a house. And uh, like there was bedrooms in the house that I would, wouldn't see for six months. Like, you know what I mean? I just yeah, had the house set. And the, sometimes the lads would come up. And then I remember I one of the lads bought me a, a PlayStation for a, a housewarmer present. And I got into that. So I was thinking, this is the business. I ended up getting an Xbox. You know, it was an Xbox 360. And then I arrived down to Tipperary. I think I probably told you this, but one of my nephews said to me, do you know you're ranked 71st in the world in Call of Duty? What? And he was, he was oh, well what? impressed. Yeah. And, and to me, that was a real, oh, here, you want to wake up and have a serious <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yourself, true you know? too, in all fairness now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What age uh, was your nephew at the time, like when you said this to you? Oh, he was only, like, he was only 14 or 15. But, and he was uh, impressed you know. by that, you see. Like, so at least you had to cop on to go, oh, wait. Oh, fuck. There were 70 million copies of that sold. And I was 71st in the world. <laughs> well, you didn't fucking end up in it. I accidentally oh, yeah. fucking, some cunt robbed my face and stuck me in the fucking thing. Was that oh, Call of Duty? Oh, listen, on, that was Call of Duty World at War, yeah. yeah. Absolute, without a shadow of a doubt. I couldn't and, wait to show that to you. Yeah. And you saw the other one then where I ended up in fucking uh, Grand Theft Auto? Did no, you see no, that one? I haven't no. seen that one. No, no. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 do you know what it is? It's the later years of um, the chiseled look, Tom, that's in Call of Duty. <laughs> it's, well, the, it's, the, it's the Tom who's done well on, with the drugs immediately after the war. Um, yeah. But it's it, you know he kind of let himself go a small bit. Like I'm on the front. But if, cover it, of, if, if, it, if the next one now has a mullet, then you'll definitely know they're getting look. They're they're modeling their characters on you. Well, even I put it to somebody who would know about these things. And I went, yeah, but do I just have a generic white fella's face? And he goes, you do and you don't. No. He says, you got fucking beady little eyes. Like he's the, you know what? The no, one in Call of Duty is the absolute head of you. There's no shadow of a doubt. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bastards and not a fucking not a penny for it. <laughs> and you got the seventy first. Nobody even patted me on the back for in it. Do you know yeah. we just got freaked out over in your sitting room that day? Going, what the <laughs> fuck is? Because I thought you were taking the piss, and you yeah. you revved up load somebody's face too. And I mean, uh, but then you showed no me from the, the minute from the minute I saw it, and I couldn't wait to show it to you. Uh, yeah, so. And that what was the turning point then? So you hit seventy first, and what you call it? Did you get rid of the consoles then? I went. Oh I no, and, and the Chinese. Here. The local Chinese, I would only ring them up and they would say my order to me on the phone and stuff like that. So I was kind of like, uh, yeah, I need to have a serious good look at myself. But uh, no, but I, like even Sharon, now, my wife would say, just remember back then and you you were wearing this when I met you, I'm wearing that when I met you. You know, this kind of thing. And uh, like I thought I looked fashionable that I was a bit, you know, but no, she changed, you know, she got a couple of My whole wardrobe was gone. You, know? you were a fixer upper. Is that what you're saying, Paul? Oh, big time, big time. <laughs> 
the house the house I had was a kit, but I was more of a fixer upper than that was. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but how happy yeah. were you just living in there by oh, yourself? I still think about it because <laughs> I was thinking about a thing there recently. Like married men don't like you know what they're saying about you fantasize about other women. I I fantasize just about having the house myself. You know. <laughs> <laughs> <Do> we, <you> know? <laughs> I, yeah. I, I've been there, done that, you know. So, yeah, uh, but, I'd imagine the amount of the amount of lads getting piles from just hanging out in the jacks this past year, uh, just on their phones, just going, you know what? They'll be all right for another half an hour without me. It's fine. I'll just hang out here, like. Because my my little fellow is like try and keep him entertained and all. He has a switch, you know, when he's meant to the switches. I don't. So I, I've seen them, Christmas. but I don't know what so they are. I, every I, evening when I come home, I. Yeah, it's like it's 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 Mario, you know that kind of stuff. You know, it's it's handy enough uh, video games. But this oh, is what I'm doing right. now is I'm playing two player with him. Now, so uh, it's 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 a cycle, you know. What's how do I stay away from that, Paul? Because if I get any, oh, it's here... impossible. It, it, it won't happen. No, it, it, it'll, it'll, yeah, Where did he? Well, yeah, but he, he didn't lick it off the ground. Consoles. How did he find out about a console day one? Was this going to Croatia? Oh, or and what? nephews, uh, cousins. They all have oh, them. They all, yeah. Yeah, all yeah, these cousins don't do have them. Yeah, yeah, shit. And the lads in school, every young fella has one. Yeah, and and yes. even I see them. You know when they're doing the, the the classroom thing, and you can see the kids on Zoom. You can see in the background. No, like, Paul, I ab- have absolutely no. I, I, <laughs> that'd be really weird was, if I was there on Zoom going, "Well, kids, what's the crack?" <laughs> that was some ordeal, and I was trying to make it fun for him because I remember one of the first days I did it, and you can't. So you can't hear each other. She mutes everyone. And okay, then you have right. to unmute yourself to answer a question, right? So just to be have a bit of crack, like she would go, or oh, we're going to ask someone, uh, David, do you know the answer? And I was going, come on, David, come on, David. And Sean thought <laughs> this is hilarious, right? And then he'd answer, and i go, yes, David. And Alan Sean would force himself laughing. So if she looked on the screen, she would see him just laughing the whole time. Because we were just, like, it's boring as fuck otherwise. Like, you know, she's going through all this stuff, right? So then Sharon is doing the school with him the next day and he starts at this thing come on David she's like what are you doing <laughs> he's, he's like uh, this is what daddy does so when I come home from work that she was like what are you doing with him on Zoom this is serious child's education I was like okay <laughs> oh Jesus but, uh, I think we'll all look back at this last year you know in the years to come and just think jeez how do we how do we get by it at all? You know. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I I was trying to work my way around it. Going, is there at least our fella sure him the clue? It's grand. He's only eighteen months. Sure, he's having yeah. the t- time of his fucking life. Sure, we're around the whole time. It's great. But because uh, we since we moved to the country, our our a chap he was working on the he did a little mini digger. He's fucking yeah. obsessed with diggers and dumpers and anything heavy diesel at all. He just wants it's fucking all he wants. Like, and yeah. uh, walked him down to it anyway. And he. He was eyeballing this. He says, uh, you want to sit him up on it? And it's only a mini digger. It's only like a, a ton and a half one, like, so with the open. With the open. So I said, all right. So I sat him up. He fucked me straight away onto the onto the two levers, started moving the bucket. And your man's yeah. cool, because you know yourself in the countryside. Let him off, sure. You know, just yeah, like yeah. that, swinging What's around. He was fucking happy. Now, in my own head, I'm going, can we just fucking ditch school altogether? Get him working straight away. Like, just, just when, because <laughs> he's going to be tall. You can see his fellow in the Tash's brothers, he's going to be tall. Like, so, like, yeah. by three or four, he could definitely sit up in a digger, no bother, and just, fuck, we could put him working straight away. Is there a point? Like, everything's gone sideways now. I think we all realise that, eh, whatever. I, I know, I definitely rethink things the way, to, the way you know, it's, it's made us rethink a lot of things. But, uh, no, but it's cast away boys are like that. Like, I brought Sean down home one time, and my uh, brother-in-law put him up on the ride-along lawnmower, and, oh, he just wouldn't stop mentioning, you know, he was going on about it for weeks afterwards, you know. I'm sure because I know I've, I've listened to psychologists and all the rest and I'm sure if every person come like in the natural situation people coming over to the house bring a little truck for the boy or they bring a little yoke for the boy but yeah. like he he hasn't hardly seen anybody this yeah. is day one and all he's fucking now we were originally where we were we were right beside the building site and he fucking loved anything that was big yokes moving and machinery and I was helping a fellow one day, so I was just, I your man didn't have a license for his teleport or whatever. So I did once upon a time. Like so I, I was moving well, he thought this is the best fucking thing ever, like that the old lad was up driving this fucking teleport or like yeah, but yeah. it was just this obsession with it. Now it hasn't been helped by the fact that his extravagant uncle bought him a fucking Land Rover fucking whatchamacallit, Defender. Have you seen this thing? 
No, one of the electric ones that just yeah. that goes along. Oh, yeah. yeah no, one, of our, one of my neighbours has one. Yeah. He's too, like, he's oh, he's way too young for it. So we put yeah, it together yeah. thinking he was going to use, Didn't we didn't actually realise that it was actually on. We put put the wheels on and all the rest. I thought I'd left the two wires unattached. Yeah. And sat him into thinking he was going to use it as a play box or whatever. And he was on, about a week of floating around with it. Next thing, you could see him looking down onto the, onto the floor. Next thing, foot onto the pedal. The fucking thing started moving. Yeah, he yeah. starts steering it. Can't get him out of the thing now. Driving it around the fucking kitchen. Deadly. Slapping it off <laughs> fucking everything. But Come here, speaking, speaking of something similar, um, I was out walking. I'm going out walking most evenings now. You have actually interrupted my walk. Oh, <laughs> Jesus, I'm so sorry. Like, it's in the middle <laughs> of a fucking storm. About, I'm doing you a favour. I'm only messing. It's, it's, it's lashing outside. I'm only messing. But I was on the way back and outside the chipper, my local chipper, where there's a biker gang hanging around. 15 and 16 year olds. Electric scooters. No, this is I'm writing. And, a, I'm writing a bit of the bit. Go on, please tell me about this. And they're looking at me like they're hard men. Like, and I'm walking past. I just I got a fit of laughing. I was like, oh, the world is fucked. This is like, oh my god, you have realised my dreams right now because I'm writing a bit and I can't wait to get back at yeah. it about how emasculating those things are. Like, I, write them all oh. you want, but don't fly around them with a big hard face. You like nobody has ever jumped off one of those and gotten into a fight and won. You know what I mean? You didn't ride one yeah. in like, like, you know, like fucking James Dean, fucking foot down, like on the fuck with the, with the, the old kickstand, step off, get into a bar fight outside of the fucking yeah. roadhouse and take somebody's head off. You, you can't do that. But there's a electric... copper friend of mine was, there's a copper friend of mine was telling me they're all around like Fingers and Ballymun and all. They all like, well, I'm using them. I'm sorry if there's that, you know, but <laughs> He's, he's stationed out there. That's the reason he's telling me. But That's fine. He said, like, so you know when you have bollards on to stop motorbikes right going on, they can get in between them. Of course. So they can go anywhere. They're in the fucking business. But these lads are kind of looking at me as if, like, they're kind of looking at Timothy. <laughs> I was like, That's for fuck's sake. When I was their age, I had a fucking CX-500, you know. It was yeah, like a, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, and it's, oh, it's just, it's ridiculous, you know. Uh, the... the and you know these these lads. I, and the other thing is, I, I keep telling myself at the moment that I'm I'm 49 now in June. Uh, are, and I'm thinking to myself, are the user today go just a bunch of fucking head to balls, or am I just getting old? You know that way. Which is which? Like, is yeah, and I think there, though, yeah. as a, a stand up, you're probably fairly reasonable, self critical, and po- you know yeah. in a in a constructively criti- critical way, you probably criticize yourself a lot and go, I need to change my yeah. habitat. Because most people don't. They just stay on a course of fucking whatever fuckery they were on. No, definitely definitely when you get older, uh, young people do. Like this, It's part of, it's one of those, I remember reading it before, it's part of it's the stages of getting old that young people will annoy this shit. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. but uh, I think, no, I mean, electric school is not fucking hell. I just, you know, uh, uh, and then it's all the little stuff as well. You know, like, um, uh, when you're talking like I have a lot of nieces and nephews and when they say stuff like um, uh, literally yeah. in the wrong context just literally for everything uh, yeah uh, one of them said to me the other day um, oh no we were going for ages or whatever and I was literally Hank Marvin and I was like no that's the the guitarist of the shadows as well yeah I was, was going to say yeah yeah you were, <laughs> ironic you're so wrong in using literally there because you're you, not you, him you used yeah. you used a cockney slang which is so yeah, it's, well. it's, it's yeah. the absolute opposite of being literal. It's it's actually literal is totally uncool in that vi- environment. So you and I literally I'm I've had a sex change so, and now I rec- I now I, I I identify as Hank Marvin, the lead the lead guitarist in the shadows. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and I heard it on the radio as well. There's some DJ and uh, and they said they were talking about this uh, singer and said I saw her a couple of years ago in the Olympia and she was literally on fire. And I was thinking no. We would have fuck. I would have heard about that. Yeah. I, would have show, I, would, I would have showed up at the station the next morning I would have been and, there. and said, "So lads, did that happen last night?" They go, "Marshy, you're not going to believe this, but there was a fucking one singing in the Olympia last night." You know what I mean? And like, she was literally on fire. I, 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 no. I, I, I can beat you on this. I heard, and this is a person older than me saying it, but you know. Like, yeah. Their 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 choice of speech is often fucking withers me, but. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know they're they're a nice person, but I heard it was they were at this point of flabbergast in the fucking in yeah. his telling of a story, and it was l- literally l- literally that end e- period end of discussion, literally literally, 
Like this is that was it. Yeah, we've entered a new realm of absolute fuckery now. This is just this carry on cast. A keep couple going. of years ago, it was amazing. Everything was amazing, and then and and or, or the other one that used to see my head in was a. Uh, I, I know I'm sounding like an elephant here, but um, uh, Pacific instead of specific. Oh Jesus Christ! And, and I always ask him, "What's your favorite sea?" And I need you to be Pacific. <laughs> You know, like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, just, well, well, no, I'm definitely getting old. I am. Well, no, you're a word Nazi. Like, you are a word, but you also have to be because your whole thing is puns, like, because oh, yeah, yeah. it is the play of words that you have to be fucking conscious of. Like, so as soon as somebody starts just acting the bollocks, you're like, no, this is, you've stepped outside into another realm now. You can't be doing this. Like, and, and, and uh, for, the, I, I think I was talking before, but I, uh, for the, for most of the pandemic, about halfway through last year, I just decided, I was afraid I'd lose my grasp on comedy and kind of, you know, there was, I know I did a few Zoom gigs and stuff like that, but uh, I saw a lot of people were kind of just switching off. And, you know, yeah. you, you know me more better than anyone I can. I'm always just uh, <laughs> into it. But I just, I set myself a task of putting up a joke every day, no matter how bad the joke was. And some of them were, were bad. But I've done, I've kept kept it up five o'clock every day. I put up uh, a stupid pun. But it's or great. A, a, a I see it going up and I'm going, that's the fuck, that's what you have to do. Like, and you, yeah. I don't know how, like fellas at fuck are going to be fucking absolutely in the throes of depression because if you've spent five, six, ten years, cr- you know, constantly tr- trying to create, even if it isn't your full time job, and now all of yeah. a sudden you're going fuck the world. There's nobody to listen to me. There's always somebody yeah. to listen to you. There's, it, there's yeah. all even if there's only two people, at least you're creating something for somebody. Like you know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. So I think it's only a, it's healthy for lads. And you see it when I when I have lads on the podcast. I go fuck. I because you had to work a little bit because you know if you're here. In a comedy, you know, you'll have a bit of crack because you know there's an audience listening to us or whatever, but you could see yeah. that they're going, fucking lovely now, you know, that hour flu or whatever. Yeah. So I've been loving the fact that you, I have a new love of, I've always had a love of puns, but I've never been brave. I, I remember I'd, I'd, um, I drove, went down to, I drove down to Kilkenny with Beck Hill and we drove back up again and we did the Forbidden Fruit Festival and we were, I was, she was, she, she was very good at puns now. She, puns were her yeah. thing because she does the, you know, she does the, the turning over yeah, on I've the page. Seen, I've very seen good, like, this, you know. Yeah. But um, I was surprised myself how many puns I was like, as, but it was only purely because, you know, you're an hour in and you're going, I better fucking step up here now. And then the puns started coming, like, but it was, they were a bit it, fucking it, cringy. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny. It used to be years ago kind of seen as a kind of the worst form of comedy. You wouldn't, uh, but uh, I, I think as the years have gone on, I think two things is a factor. When you become when you become a parent, you kind of go full circle. I think at some stage, right? I remember coming to Dublin when I was nineteen or twenty or whatever, and if you said something silly, humor wise, something like "Oh, fuck's sake," you know, and and it was kind of knocked yeah. out of you because yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're an adult yeah. now. You don't do that, kind of, you know, or whatever. And and there's a lot of that. Like peer pressure doesn't stop when you're a teenager; it goes on the rest of your life, you know. And there's always there's, there's always just some fellow to school or whatever and but when you have a child then you see you go back to being silly oh yeah like i was yeah, up there yeah. tonight with sean putting to bed and i'm being trying to be as silly as can be and the more facial gestures and the whole lot like he's bursting himself laughing and it's just silly stuff you know but i mean uh, you 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 embrace the silliness again i think when you get older you just think fuck it i don't care i find it funny if you don't but i you know. i i've noticed a thing too about um almost uh institutions like the in public service like and people who, who, do you know, it's a dedication, whether you're a yeah. fire fire officer or you're a nurse or you're a teacher. A lot of the times, our guards, I've noticed when they're moved in a gang, now maybe not so much fire officers because you kind of, you can choose to be a fire officer, you know, as an adult and one yeah, yeah. or into being a fire officer. But I've noticed nurses and teachers and guards because they're sent away into a school, you know, it's almost yeah. like they've never left school. So you get this fucking, this peer pressure thing is something serious. I remember a couple of yeah. lads that were, that were going out with girls that were nurses and teachers and stuff. Well, the fucking every week they were being told and told heavy how such and such was after getting engaged. And, uh, you know, if you want to be fucking, Jesus yeah. Christ, relax, I'm 23. You know, like it was, it <laughs> yeah, was yeah, fucking yeah. heavy weather, like. So you can see it, but you can see definitely when you get to, and I definitely, I lost, I probably didn't lose the pure crazy because I embrace. I worked with a couple of fellas that really appreciated the crazy. Yeah. But definitely lost the silly. But the silly then, as you said, the older I'm getting, the less. It, look, look at me, boy. It, de- it definitely fuck, comes back. Yeah. I look like one of the lads from fucking Duck Dynasty for the love of shit. And <laughs> I'm embracing it so hard. I think I've actually 
I've metamorphosized into something that people can't remember what I looked like before. Somebody was actually, a picture popped up in somebody's timeline from a gig somewhere and they sent, sent it on to me and went, look at the disgraceful tidy head in you. You know, as if to say yeah. like, the fact that you look like a complete looper right now, that's the way you should be looking because that's Mr. Silly Comedy Tom. And I've just gone, because one, like surely one of your heroes has to be somebody like Milton Jones. Like, like you look at Milton yeah. Jones, you know some jokes are coming out of him. And uh, albeit they're going to be some of the best puns you're ever going to fucking hear in your life. Like, did you ever meet him? Yeah. No, I've never. He was uh, he was down in Galway once, and I didn't. Um, I can't remember what the story. I think I'd come home earlier or something. I was. I was. Like, well, I I think there might be something in the breeding of ye fuckers, ye big lads, because him and Stuart Francis are nearly the same size. Are they? Yeah. Well, uh, Stuart Gary Francis. Delaney as well is one of my favorites. He's a big enough lad as well. He is. Yeah, he is. And, Stuart and Tim Vine is six. Six, four, or five as well. He is, yeah. Jesus, yeah. So it's something with puns, just big tall fellas. Yeah. Because Francis, I remember I opened Francis in Dublin one night and we walked around and we ran into Milton Jones. And he says, Milton, this is Tom. And I'm standing between, I'm like, what the fuck is it with <laughs> pun lads? And then I remember thinking of you and I, I'd actually, yeah, I met um, Tim Vine briefly, but it was actually in, do you know, I didn't appreciate his height because it was in Edinburgh inside one of the, um, Inside in the the vaults, so everybody yeah. was everybody was ducking down, so he didn't look yeah, so yeah. tall, like you know that kind of way. But he's, he's he he used to be one of my favorite Tim finds that I could never understand. See, the thing about doing stand one liners is, like you know yourself when you start doing comedy, you don't realize. What, like, I thought I was going to be Bill Hicks, but obviously, yeah, because you know, I was going to ask you about that because you totally don't do Bill. Hicks. Bill Hicks is was so seriously funny, like yeah, and he, like he, I would have thought way. I'm going to go in and I'm going to be political and I'm going to have these stern messages. I actually made a joke there at the last Christmas during the uh, in the crunch. That someone went up before me. I can't remember who it was and was talking about something. You absolutely about remember, but you're not going to say it on the podcast. That's no, I, no I, can't, I can't remember who it was. But he was talking about something. Bad. And I remember coming up after him and just, and because everyone's only doing five minutes and he said, next Palmer. And just before I, I, just as I got up onto stage, I still have the video of it. I, I went, uh, uh, just to let you know, it'll be nothing political for me. It'll be dad jokes all the way. And that just got a big laugh straight away. Yeah, because I was just taking the, the piss, like you know. Well, that's uh, the thing with I, the I, likes I, of Hicks. If you're not or Carolyn, like they would be. Imagine them now, how big they'd be because of you know conspiracy and fuck the system and all the rest yeah. of it. Like you know, they'd be f- like. But the thing is that, right now. like, they they would have been in a time where you could have started like that and kind of got gigs for it. But now you can't. You can't be. I always compare comedy to like, say, if you're a DJ. Um, you can't play the songs you like. You have to play the songs that will fill well, the dance I can floor. guarantee you, George Carlin and fucking Bill Hicks started out, come, they didn't start out like that either. I wouldn't have thought. That's, they, yeah. You exactly. know, they, you'd be and, guaranteed uh, like, they stood out going, jokey, 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 jokey. And then when they found their own voice and, you know, and Carlin realized. Like Frankie I, Boyle, Frankie Boyle emceed the laughter lounge for years. Yeah. Like did, he emceed places and, once he got his own following, then he kind of started doing his own thing. But uh, no, no, definitely they don't start out like that. But no, but I think I'd, I'm not on the road. Though. I'm not going to go all of a sudden from one-liners to being Bill Hicks now at this stage. Anyway. But uh, uh, no, I was always a big fan of Tim Vine, but um, I could never understand how you could do, like, he, I, I'm learning lately that you, um, I was listening to a podcast with uh, Gary Delaney on it. And he was saying, you kind of only have to do, you can only do about 10 minutes of one-liners and then you got to change it. You got to, yeah, maybe uh, I like I was thinking I have a load of picture ones. I'm going to start doing them just to break it up. You have to break it up basically when you're one liner. You can't Absolutely. do them all. So Absolutely. Um, so I I like doing a bit of everything. I tell stories and I kind of uh, all different styles of jokes. I think you know, but I I, I obviously love one liners more than anything else. Yeah, so. there's um. You said you were doing the the, the one a day challenge, so uh, challenging yourself to one a day. What was today's one? Yeah. Oh, uh, today's one was a, oh, was a simple enough one. It was about um, uh, uh, I've got another Kinder egg today, and there was nothing in the middle of it. I'm not surprised anymore. <laughs> it was just as I say, I didn't say they were good, you know. <laughs> yes, but yeah, uh, the heavy, the, the weight of that being on the word surprised, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so um, I'm going to challenge it. I'm going to challenge you. Um, right, going yeah. Because you must have come through a fucking million of them at this stage. Give me one because I was literally just on the phone to somebody from Cork. There's the uh, one. Like, come on, some on Cork. Cork, Cork, Cork. Uh, I actually have a few from Cork. Are they one-liners? Um, um, 
Oh yeah. Uh, I've seen a doctor in Cork for my bipolar disorder. So I'm up and down all the time. <laughs> I was I was trying to think of other stuff because most of the stuff that, uh, most of the funny st stories about when I'm on stage or getting heckles have all happened to me in Cork. Cork people are great for heckling, like good heckles, you know? Yeah. I, I have that joke about Ikea. And I did it down at Cork. And it's only like the first time. And it, it genuinely happened. Uh, where I was giving examples of Ikea is a lot like sex. Um, I can't even remember now, but I, Ikea is a lot like sex. Um, I can remember yeah. your Ikea one. I, I can, it, looks, it, it looks, yeah, it looks... Um, better when Swedish people are doing yeah. it. Yeah, and what was it? It's, 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 you, can, it's, you can do it with the wife, but you doing it by yourself, you can do it in half the time or something like that. Am I right? Uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. yeah. If, you go with it, yeah if you do it without the wife, you can get it done in half the time. And then the, the, point, the, the third, the rule of three, all the yeah. rule of three is that, uh, I like it, but I don't want to have to go to Ballymun for it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and a guy in Cork actually shouted, uh, and your dad is always trying to help. <laughs> okay, that's that's not bad. That's not bad. That's not, I mean, and the it's... funny thing was, he was sitting up the front, uh, I can say this, he was sitting up the front of the city limits or like on the right-hand side, but there was no shame and like, he just kind of nodded, turned around and looked at everyone as if it wasn't that a great line. And I was like, oh God, that's... Uh... <laughs> It's not. It's not a bad one. Like I know you said the rule of three, but in fairness, if you can give the fourth one to a oh, heckle, yeah, I always, it, it I, always work. Tell, I always tell that one now, and it's true. Like it's. I, I just. I love a true story. I love a good heckle or a good. Uh, like there's loads of stuff that have happened. You know, I listen to a lot of podcasts about comedians. And they always say a lot of stuff has happened on stage, but for me, any of them, you know, or sorry, they, they would say I've, I've written as I've went on stage or whatever. Yeah, and that was because the audience ended up steering you someplace. Or yeah. Someone, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, absolutely. Like I'm, mean, I wanted to, still to the day, this day, the greatest, most subtle, and beautiful heckle I ever got was in the Jobstown Inn. Do you remember that mad fucking place? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, do you remember I used to do a bit about my walk, how it'd be culty fucking walk, which you, which you pointed out to me one day. I went, I've never. I think we were meeting for for breakfast or something. And I was walking towards you, and as I sat down, you went. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you really do have a culty fucking walker. <laughs> Which I do. I can't help it. But do you, do, you, do you know what it is that I think it is from, from seeing you walk? It's the welly walk that you put your foot down, but there could be another wrench to go in yeah. the muck. Kind yeah. Of. That's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're almost, as I, I, I've described it, it's, it's an, agric an Irish agri version of like, do you remember when... Um, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon came out. The lads could leap all over the place, and because they were so yeah, light yeah. of foot, that's essentially what yeah. it is. Just looks a bit <laughs> fucking a bit rough when we do it, like. But um, <laughs> but I was on stage, and I'll never forget. I I did. I was because they always thought I was a mad. Like they were mad out there, but I I, lo yeah. I embraced their madness, and it kind of fueled me. And I came madder back at him, and I think we all appreciated. It, like so they were going, yeah, yeah, because they didn't know where, what box to put me in at all when they saw me on stage. Like because you, you know you've yeah. a gang of old ones, and they're all drinking WKD, like you know, out of a bucket. Like yeah, it's yeah. fucking, it's absolute madness. One fella had a lurcher, do you know, like just. Sitting... I had I I had gone from I I had gone in from going in there on ambulance cases <laughs> to then doing a comedy gig. <laughs> Like I'd never been in there. <laughs> Going in, taking out some fellow who was out to fucking get the head bit off, my foot. and then all of a sudden, I was doing a gig there. You know, yeah. Yeah. but literally, yeah. You, but I this particular night, anyway, I, I was doing this bit about my walk, and I said, "Will you, you know, have you ever seen your own walk?" And everybody will always go, would, won't even rea react to a degree. They'll go, "You'll sense from the audience that nobody's ever." visually watch their own walk on something and, and criticize themselves about their walk. They will with their voice. Everybody hates yeah. the sound of their own voice, but they'll never have seen the walk. And you can always see people go, oh, tell us more. This is an interesting thing. I've never, but that's, and that's just a general kind of silent reaction coming from people because I don't need that enough yet. I'm moving quickly on to the next bit. And out of nowhere, I'll never forget, I, I, I think it was Billy DeGorsi's brother who's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. As calm a fuck, like, I mean, calm, like, there was no bigness about him. He just went, no. When I asked, had anybody <laughs> seen their own walk? And he just, and no. And the thing was, nobody around him heard him. And I, his name is Gaza. He's, yeah, he's a gas character. He's a gas yeah, bastard. Yeah. And 
I couldn't let it go. It was it cracked me up. It was so <laughs> beautiful. I could I should like I maybe a more immature me would have just gone. Oh fuck, he said that, and I'm going to move on. Because but thankfully I'd hit a moment of maturity and I went. This moment can't go. This is that is too fucking. That's funnier than anything else. I'm probably going to say for the next ten minutes. And I I just went. Sorry guys. And everybody in the room knew him because he's a character. I went down with the microphone to him. I said, guys, when I asked, had anybody seen their own walk? What was your, what did you just say? And he went, no, no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> it was like he lost <laughs> his walk somewhere. The fucking room. It was like Jeff Jam comedy and fucking Bernie Mac was on stage. Yeah, everybody, you don't understand. You don't know. I scare you motherfuckers. It was just this moment of the whole place turned into this fucking Harlem black club. Went bananas, throwing their tops in the air, yeah. fucking people kicking up. It was the, f- I just dropped the mic and walked off like, like Patrice O'Neill. I was like, there is nothing I can say. My, my set is over. My set is over. And that, it was, well, it was the- glorious. So, like, you had some of the gigs that were in there were unbelievable, but they were brilliant. Like, they were, uh, but the place was jam packed for uh, the final of a competition or something that was was on there one time. And totally word were headline, and they did a song called Junkie Love. Lovely. And then they stopped in the middle of it, and they got everybody in the audience. Was, I want you all to clap along, and it went on like their arms. Oh where, my! Where they God. clapped on their arms as if they were getting a vein ready. <laughs> And the whole place. <laughs> the old ones and everything. This is the thing. Like, people yeah, don't understand. I mean, the the old ones, ones young brilliant. ones, fucking. It was a, there was a glorious madness to that place that you couldn't recreate. Uh, and everybody knew everyone. That's the thing. Uh, but it was it's on a, great, you, it? what was the beauty of it was, like, you, you could see five acts go on and every one of them die on their hoop because they couldn't tap into that madness that was in the room. Because like. yeah. the madness mightn't be on show. You just had to be able to fucking dig it out of them. Like, and once you dug it out of them, it was... Just a yeah. fucking absolute gold mine. Give us another pun. Uh, two lads out digging the road. C- county council. Two lads digging the road. Uh, oh, I actually have one on the county council. Let me think. It's uh, yeah. It was one of my oldest jokes. Is my uncle? Um, oh, I'm trying to think of it now. Uh, yeah, my uncle works for the county council. He got a promotion recently from roads to footpaths. Uh, it's a step up from. Yes. Um, so <laughs> his his career is on the right path. I. Uh, <laughs> I did a thing on a totally different note. Uh, Adam Burke is doing a thing for the Bray Comedy Festival for um, um, new comedians and giving oh, them like a voice. Workshop, or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he just and he just asked me what. I, so I I just thought because I always think it's like cheating is tags. You know the tags on jokes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. tagline. So I sorry, I call them tags. Taglines. So like, if I, I give you an example, the, the one I have with the most is. Um, that I, like you said earlier on about the rule of three or rule of four, I get away with doing four. I tell people I, I'm in an S and M club, but it's full. You can't accept any new members. Uh, our hands are tied, and so that's the, the reason. And then you go. So there's no point in submitting application forms. Yes, of course. Yeah. Personally, I'd like to give everyone a fair crack at a whip, but they won't allow it. Why beats me? And I get away with four on some of them, and and it's and it's like in my you see. I remember Carl explained to me before, like if you're going from zero to hundred, like zero is people being serious and a hundred is them laughing. Rather than let them come back down to a zero to get them up to hundred yeah, yeah. again, it's like cheating. It's like keeping them up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, and it's and uh, so that was the one piece of advice that I was like, oh, that's the first thing you have to learn when you're doing comedy is that. Uh, so, um. Uh, and I've, I've said this more times, but if there's anyone listening to the podcast who's, who sees my Facebook, uh, one of the ways I do this is uh, I put the jokes up on Facebook and then all my friends and colleagues tag them. It's like I have this big team oh, of it's, writers. It's, it's unbelievable. The first person you see, Colin Morgan in, can't resist. Larkin fucking use, can't resist. Jumping in like, yeah. And by the time yeah, I ever few... see him, there's like 35. I'm like, well, there's no point in jumping in now. But I think I jumped in. I did, I did jump in the other day. I think for for one. Yeah. Like. Well, you put up you put up one there last week. Or was it week before? Yeah, I was did. I did. I did. And I was saying I should really have given it to you. Like it was not at all. I, just, I love to see that it's catching on. And because Colin O'Regan has started putting them up. He and has. Carl I has noticed started, that. Carl yeah, has started yeah, putting yeah, them up, yeah, and they're all yeah. there. You see, I, I, I actually I'm, 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 it's contagious. I driving down today. I have one for you. I have one for right. you. I'm going to put it up, and you'll you'll like it. It's it's 
at a level of silliness that. Well, you, I found, by the way, that people kind of check into Facebook in the uh, in the evening from between five and six or whatever. So if you put it up at five, it kind of gains momentum in the two hours. Oh, is that it? I, I don't pay any yeah. attention to social media times. So, and I so, should. I should. Well, well, for puns, they are the, the type of people who put taglines on pun, puns. So put it up then the same time as mine because I noticed the Carl and the whole up. So you have about three or four of them on the go then. You know? and, and it's good for the comedy brain, I think. It's great. Yeah, you know, right it is. Fun. Absolutely. Because you go, fuck, that's... And I, oh, I tagged one of your ones. It was... um. It was something to do with mass or being an altar boy or something, and I said at least you're a good host or you're ho- or something like that. And yeah, was, yeah. But I had to fucking literally go back like forty to make sure nobody had taken it because there's nothing I, worse than writing a tag in, jump throwing a tag on, and somebody's I've already seen someone else's. Oh. I, I would know. You can see that there's, there's only a certain seven on show. You can see how people would do that. But but I have taken them. I have like I've used them in my set like. Uh, I have a joke about recliner chairs. I have a phobia about recliner chairs since, oh, going way back. <laughs> and the tags the tags that I use on them, I took from, um, I can't even remember who they were now, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a deep-seated fear. Uh, and people, it's getting very common. People t- need to sit up and take notice. These are all like, that you know, tags well, that people they, put they on. Gave it to you. You know? They fucking gave it to you. So, and my favorite tag of all is um, I used to have this joke. It's true. St- it's actually it's a true story. I was in the back of the ambulance one night, and uh, we delivered a baby. Did we deliver a baby? I'm trying to think. No, the we got we got there, and the baby was delivered. It was it was out in Lucan, and the, the, the she had actually delivered the baby in the house, and we delivered the placenta. Put your one in the ambulance, run the way to the hospital. And I used to do that usual thing about asking. I'm, I'm obsessed with names, you know. And your man goes, tell him what name you were thinking of. Tell him what name you were thinking of. And your one said, I just thought Sudoku. Sudoku, or whatever way you pronounce it, would be a nice name, right? <laughs> and I looked at your man, I was like, uh, yeah, okay. And uh, But then that became a, a joke of mine, or I would say you once said to me, uh, is that a problem? And I said, well, actually, it is a problem. <laughs> you know? And I did that inside, and um, I did that joke. Uh, that was the joke in, in the laughter lounge. And I, I walked back to the back of the stage, and uh, Ross Brown was on that night, and he goes to me, you should say that you asked for the child's date of birth, and she gave you one number, and you had to figure the rest out yourself. And I was like, deadly, I'm fucking, that's... That's the tag is better than the actual joke. That's put it away nicely. So, uh, now, yeah. Did that actually yeah. happen? Did that actually happen? You know, it did. That actually happened. You, I've got some mad names in the back. Like it's some mad. Uh, probably have them. I can't go into. Um, oh yeah, I got this story. Um, I was actually looking at old notebooks, and I can't believe I never did this. And I know that you, you don't have to watch your language on this podcast. So, no. You know, there was a guy that used to work with us. Uh, Dave was his name, and. Uh, He's in the back of the ambulance. And this woman was in labor and she, uh, she's like, her contractions are like a minute apart. And this other lad, Sean, was driving and they were like, oh, we're not fucking delivering a baby now. Get to the hospital as fast as you can. He was booting it down the, the, the long mile road, heading for the comb. And Dave realized, which oh, is, I've taken no uh, details. And he grabbed his form and he said to your one, uh, what's your name, love? And she said, McGee. And he said, I know, I know, but I'm going to have to get your name out. <laughs> And Sean nearly ah. crashed the ambulance fucking... <laughs> Sean nearly crashed the ambulance laughing. That's one of my favourite jokes you've ever told me. That was so... That is... I, I don't know why, but that is one of my favourite jokes you've ever told. That's fucking beautiful. It, it's it's so simple. And I was like, I wrote beautiful. that down before. I was like, why do I not tell that? I, got, I need to start telling you that. You have to... Because you tell it brilliantly. In fairness, <laughs> you tell it brilliantly. Like, like if you play... Like, if you really lean into the acting side of it and actually play horror... And then play him going, uh, no, but I get you. But yeah, fair all. Yeah, yeah. That's so good. That's, <laughs> oh, I love that one. There's, I told, because I, I told, did I tell you about that time that I got, to, it's one of the most glorious comedic moments. It was a, one of the apex, even though I'm not a, a one liner or a pun comedian, but I do appreciate him. But it was yeah. almost an apex of, of humor getting to hear, even though I wasn't there for it, but getting to hear about it afterwards with Milton Jones. He had been, um, he had been when I met it was it was at the 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 Vodafone the Ivy Festival, Gardens isn't it? the Ivy Gardens and yeah I was with Francis and, and Neil Fran or Neil Francis as I played, played fucking rugby Stuart, for Ireland yeah. not at all fella Stuart Francis um 
he says, tell Tom about, because uh, he was, we got a quick pint and he says, would you tell Tom? He said, you like a good fucking one-liner because I was, cra- he saw me yeah. cracking up at something. I said, fuck, I love it. He goes, tell Tom about the greatest one-liner comedy moment that has ever and will ever happen from last week. And he says, uh, Francis or Milton Jones says, this is true. This is 100% true. He says, so I'm playing at a festival like this, but it's not a comedy festival solely. It's a fucking bit of everything. Music, poetry, all this shit. And he's on stage in front of a big, big crowd now. Fucking thousand people inside in a tent. And you know yourself with the tents, the sound bleed can be brutal from outside. Like, yeah. And there was a, like a fucking brass band and a fucking, a, like a jazz singer singing uh, Summer Days. You know, the... Yeah. And uh, he gets to... It's getting around to the summer breeze bit, and he's 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 fucking. They are doing his head in because the whole crowd keep looking over. You know he's because he, you got to pay attention when it's fucking one liners. Yeah, yeah. And it's killing him, and he's going fuck this. I'm I'm getting out of here. I just need a parachute. I need to find a way of getting the fuck off this stage because this is just dire. Because everybody keeps on looking at these, and he's kind of looking at security, going, "Would you go out and shut them fuckers up while I'm on, or at least hunt them over?" Because they weren't on a stage, yeah. or whatever. And. He times it beautifully. He says, if I could have your attention, please, before I go anywhere, I, I would like to point out that I do have a brief, a small bit of an addiction when it comes to cheese. And I'd love to list some of those cheese off for you. And he's timing it and timing it. He says, so, of course, some of them are, are cheddars and some of them are gorgonzolas and some of them are better, even blue cheese. But really, you know, the ones that really hit me the hardest are, well, and he just waits. Summer breeze drifting, <laughs> and he finishes the song with him. The place goes ballistic, puts the mic back in the stand, goes, Look, thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs> and it, the place just he'd only done about five minutes. And the place stood up, gave him a fucking standing ovation. So I can't, it's not not only am I sick to my shit from listening to them bollocks outside, but I can't go on after doing that. I just, I've just smashed that moment. Like, there's no topping what I just did. Like, I wrote something down later on. You're after reminding again. I wrote, I wrote it. There, I had something about the fire brigade about nicknames, and I can't remember what I did because there's some brilliant nicknames in the fire brigade. Uh, they've nicknamed uh, one of the lads on the station, his nickname is Blister because he arrives after the work is done. <laughs> I just thought that was fucking brilliant. <laughs> but, <laughs> that is but, fucking that is cheat. Somebody <laughs> that is beyond genius. I know, yeah. I, had, I, had a, I had a list of them, and I don't know what I did with it. Oh, I'll wow. think of it again. Uh, that is. I, I, Fucking but, glorious! But come here, I tell you, when you mentioned there about your 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 favorite comedy, I mean, when everything aligns, right? So there's some thirteen ambulances, and a friend of mine called Derek Alwell lives, or sorry, works out. It's a great, in, it's a great name for a paramedic. It is, oh. and uh, oh, no. he, he he works out in uh, Kilbarrick, so he's stationed at Kilbarrick. So the station, the ambulance, the hospitals he would go to mostly would be Bowmount and the Matter, and I'm in. Uh, uh, Dunleary and the hostels we would go to mostly would be um, Vincent's and James's or whatever but every now and again, we'd go, again we go to the matter or every now and again they might come over our way because it's the nearest ambulance what it, and I keep waiting and waiting and I thought of this ages ago uh, I must have thought about it nearly two years ago it's, it's still hasn't feeling. happened right I, go on. so <laughs> I work with a girl and she's regularly on the Amazon with me and her name is Sarah Good right? she's a good friend of mine and she's great so I cannot wait till I get that we go to a hospital and they're there and I'm going to say, uh, there's a great crew on the ambulance tonight and that's all well and good, but who's going to be on it tomorrow night? <laughs> and I'll retire after that. That's going to do it. That'll be it then. Just uh, bring, I'm, if you know it's going, bring a fucking camera crew with you. Oh no, like, I'm, going to, yeah. I'm going to film it. I'm like going to, yeah, it has to be done. That's all well and good. <laughs> fucking beautiful. What a great fucking, uh, what a great one to I, finish on. I, I I love I love I love uh, um, just when the the, the stars align and something that just pops into your head and I was giggling away to myself and I, was, and I spent the last two years every now and again I'll, I'll think of it and I giggle I, it still hasn't happened but I'll let you know if it does anyway yeah I'm going to <laughs> so tomorrow evening at five o'clock so I'm going to put up that one it's tipper, it's a Tipperary based one but it's so obscurely silly that you like it you like it it's um, the... I love. I love. Can I tell you a silly one? This is the silliest yes. one I've ever written, right? And I have. I might. I'll. I'll tell you what I'll do. Is I'll put this up tomorrow. Okay. Um. I don't just pay bank fees. I pay bank fees, fees, foes, and funds. Because it's. A, <laughs> it's. It, 
It's a joint bank account. That's got a that's a two headed joke. That's fucking incredible. <laughs> that's fucking incredible. There, so I, I, the tags on that would be ridiculous because you're talking fairy tale there now. Like that will be ridiculous. The tag I might oh, actually wait till the next day because that's there's so many fairy I, tales to do with that. I'm going through old stuff and 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 the silly ones that I can I can never put up or I would never have the guts to. But I'm because I'm doing all the silly ones now. I'm kind of getting more guts to do it. And one that I taught of before it was another one, and uh, that or something similar in a silly ways. But uh, I just sat through a two-hour lecture about the smallest roads in Ireland. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> You need to leave that as a voice note on Facebook. Don't leave it. Don't write it because it'll be lost. No, you see, stuff. that's it. There's loads got, of yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to leave it. One of the greatest, and I still talk about this, one of, I, because there's pure form, there's some, like when things, you know, when there's no fat on a joke whatsoever. And to lay yeah. people, they'll groan a small bit. That's the perfect one. When you go, that, there's no, you couldn't sculpt oh, that better. Groan. But I, I remember um, it was kids coming in. I think it was being produced probably by, Channel 4, which is, I know, it's been produced by Graham Norton's, co- co- he has a huge umbrella company He he's raking yeah. in millions in his sleep that man, like, but I can't remember what it was on, BBC or Channel 4 but it was just this one sketch and it was, people were queuing up and it was almost Monty Python-esque, it was so fucking beautiful but it was for kids comedy and the people were queuing up at an airport to go yeah. through the metal detector you know, and they're putting all their keys through and they're putting all their their stuff through and rolling it along and there was just the security guard was waving them on and one fella had the wand to go over him and it was going along going along and the next thing you just see this guy's face just it's close up on his face he's just stood through and it's like boom, boom beeps and it the camera pulls back and he's in a full suit of armor <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he but totally apropos like he like nothing he taps the armor like he's checking for his keys and he finds his keys and, and he kind of gives it one of them and puts it in the oak and it's like and that's it end of sketch end of sketch he didn't go that's through a second time it. there was no more needed to be done like if it was American they would have sent him through fucking five times but because it was beautifully written it was like something Dave Allen would have written back in the day it was that it done what it was one and done run in 30 seconds Everybody yeah, I, got the joke. Beautiful. I know. I, I know we're getting cut for time, but I got to tell you this because you've just reminded me. And I thought of it the other day. Uh, Ian Dempsey. I listened to him every morning, morning on the way into work. Right. And I worked in the airport police, and I was there for a year. And you Ian Dempsey, did. Yeah. Ian Dempsey has come through all the time. This is before nine eleven. Everyone was really casual, and there was a guy called Colin. I think was his name. He worked it there. He was forty years there or something like this, and he was still like going in his fifties. He was working there <laughs> since he was sixteen. And uh, Colin used to be in behind the thing and he, he loved all the celebs, but he loved Eno, you know, and Eno come through and Ian Dempsey had this big, massive biker jacket. And it wasn't like a real biker jacket for an actual motorbike that if you fell off, it would help you. It was one of these designer ones. Yes. There must I've have never been seen 20, him in it. There must have been 20 fucking zips on it. Big silver fucking zips, big zip, you know. <laughs> and he used to come through the metal detector and, and it would beep and he'd go, oh, and take about like, 17 cents worth of change out of his pocket and kind of go there. And you're like, and he used to, and your man call him every time would come around and go, ah, oh, you know, how's it going? Come on, the mind that come on over here. And uh, how are things, you know, where are you heading and all this? And he'd be chatting away to me and go off. I remember one day he turned to me, you know, he's one of the best fellas. He's one of the nicest fellas you'll ever meet. No fuck all about how metal detectors work, but a lovely <laughs> if I ever meet if I ever meet Ian Dempsey I'm going to tell him that story <laughs> oh that's fucking beautiful that is yeah what a great one to fucking finish that I probably could have talked for another fucking 10 hours but it's gone, I, gone, I, I gone kind of definitely, definitely, yeah, yeah. this has been a, a beautiful return to, to, to puntastic times you're sporting a Tipperary jersey and all as only Patreons will see thanks yeah. big god um, have you put that young fellow yours in a tip jersey please don't ever let him into oh, a, yeah, dub, he, a dub jersey he, he has he has a few of them yeah but he started playing hurling for the local club here in Raccoon which was uh, yeah uh, that'll, put, yeah, that'll do put up a picture and I got loads of text messages at the lads down home straight away so what can you do you know? I know I know what can you do so I brought my lad down here because just pretend like it never existed it never, yeah, yeah. that was the other <laughs> life it never existed tell everybody anyway the best place to follow you for seeing the, 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 these fantastic puns oh for for, for the puns uh, is Facebook um, just Paul Marsh on Facebook and uh, I'm Paul Marsh comedian on everything else so uh, 
And uh, I, I'm bringing, I'm, I'm actually working on my own podcast at the moment, but to be a while yet, I think before. It's not, it's, I'm actually just doing kind of material. I'm just yeah. having a chat. So I'm having a half hour chat on marriage, a half hour chat on kids. A half, so I don't know, really, that's my, my other project. Something Good, because you know? I know you were yeah. talking about it and that's great. Yeah, because I just felt there's not enough podcasts out there. This you is... know what I mean? <laughs> There's uh, just not enough comedians I, doing podcasts. I'd That's Paul I Howard feel, I mean. before there was any <laughs> lockdown. And I remember I'd Paul Howard on it. And, uh, on, and he, he, he opened with that. He was like, I was a great crack, but he went, um, his friend rang him the other day. It's, Jesus, listen, uh, I, I got some fucking terror, terrible news. He says, uh, what is it, Jesus? Um, me, me, me fucking old lad is only a couple of days left to live and, he goes, oh, thank fuck for that. I thought you were going to ask me to do your podcast. He's... <laughs> <laughs> well, I, and, and can I, on another note, I have to say, you've been an inspiration to a lot of people, whether you know it or not. Oh, I doubt that. And, I, well, and, no, and, and, nobody's and, grown a moustache like this yet, Paul. If I was properly inspiration, people would be growing no, but the success of, the success of this podcast has been, because I've heard you being quoted more times. By who? Uh, just, just comedians in general. They always quote... That cut. Uh, <laughs> yeah but that's you know you're probably you'd probably be kicking yourself for that but uh no um absolutely you're uh how long are you going now you're going about six years on podcasting podcast bookshot uh, uh bookshots I, I i don't honestly know i know this is like number we're nearly 180 at the minute and there's like yeah. ramble pods as well so i think we're up coming up on fuck when did i get married paul that was about five years. I still, I still four have, years, uh, four years ago. Four it? years ago, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I yeah. had, I, I had a load of pictures from that. I remember the the fire breeders outside. It was just that was dead. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You that were was, probably uh, really concerned there, were you? Though. No, I, I, I thought <laughs> that, what? Well, there was loads of stuff. That, like the the, the 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 ice cream van outside the church was the fucking best thing I've ever seen at a wedding. Was, that was genius. You know, you nearly married her yourself. Thing. You know, yeah, I didn't up on any of that uh, stuff, like. <laughs> And then, and then there was that, and then when the fire rears, I was like, ah, here, it was that was without a shadow of a doubt, and no offense to anyone else whose wedding I have been to, that was the <laughs> best wedding I've ever been. To. But if I was to do it again tomorrow, I would do it exact same work, exact same spot, fucking fire breeders, ice cream, the whole thing. Just uh, married to Tom's wife and everything. Just come on, <laughs> come on, we'll keep this consistent. <laughs> It was a good See, day. You're, 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 only, you're only moved down to Tipperary a few weeks and you're already talking about wife swapping. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've heard, yeah, I've, I've had to burn, burn the pampas grass. I was, apparently pampas grass at your front gate growing is a sign that you're a swinger. Oh, really? So if you know, I, it's just so funny. Remember the brother spring. The parents had it for years there, you know. It was growing. Yeah, yeah. It's fucking growing anyway before they even ever built a house there. I, the, I remember the father for, Ten, I bought five years on the trot, kept on cutting this because he hated it. He just, and the, it grew up, and the mother was like, Jeez, would you not let it? It's lovely. It looks exotic outside. This is the 90s. Like, and the brother, yeah. the brother was after hearing somewhere on a building site or somewhere on a farm that it was swingers. And I looked at it, it was for throughout <laughs> the 90s, it was a sign that you were a swinger if you had pampas grass. Not a stuff takes a while to grow, too. It won't grow in a week, like, but Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, you want to fucking see the scurrying when he says it's a sign of fucking swingers. I'd night and fucking day. My outlet must have put about 200 quid's worth of petrol down into it and burnt the fucking thing to its core just to try and get rid of it. So if you see anybody around Ardfin and Way with pampas grass, still growing, Paul, because it's a widely known thing now yeah. at this stage. They, Because uh, I remember when I joined the fire brigade, there was an outfit that worked with me. When I say an outfit now, he's probably late 50s or whatever. But Doggan was all the thing. It's on the Sunday down. world every week. And they were all on about Doggan. And I was telling them and explaining them what Doggan was and all the things about Doggan that uh, you, you, you had sex in the car and people were watching. If the window was half open, you were allowed to reach in. And if it was fully open, you were allowed to get involved. All it's the game. rules. Play on the game. Game yeah. on. And, and I was telling them about all this and he was obsessed with it. But um, he, <laughs> he was... Uh, it sounds uh, like you knew well, a fair bit about it too. <laughs> <laughs> no, but this fella, I used to love, Christy was name, we used to love winding him up. And uh, we're coming back from the hospital one time and all the boy racers were hanging around in the car park uh, in B&Q. And he looks in like this and he went, Doggin! <laughs> well, if it is, she's a popular girl. I guess. <laughs> she likes Honda miles. Civics, but it looks at things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph. That was... Uh... But well, that well, that's it. Yeah, uh, well, if I am an inspiration to anybody, it's more so out of ignorance, I would imagine people are going, well, if that cunt 
can fucking stay going at it, <laughs> then we may as well fucking stay going at it. So if that's hey, if that's any the probably the best form of inspiration I can give out. Yeah, I would say it was I started not long before the wedding. So yeah. over four years at this stage. So we're coming up on the anniversary because we actually passed the place today. And yeah. I made the fatal mistake going, what? So random. And I, my, as it was coming, the sentence was coming out of my mouth, Paul, I fucking knew the date. I went, it's yeah. a, a, a fucking date. And I, I finished it. She went, I went, there's no point in getting, and I, she knows not to get thick with me when it comes to no, numbers and dates and all the rest of it. I just, you know. My brother told me once before, the best way to remember your wedding anniversary is forget it once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do we know she knows what she hitched her wagon to? It's uh, I'm not the most sentimental sort, like you know what I mean. But you know, uh, I make a decent cup of tea. That's about all I got. Uh, so Paul did. Marsh, uh, everywhere. Paul Marsh, comedian. There is no other really. You know what you need yeah. to do when you want to get some decent fucking puns and one-liners and all the rest of it. But I leave the final word to you, Paul. I just want to say thanks a million for having me on again. I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing this back. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Paul, this has been a fucking delight. Honestly, I had a pure pain the whole of a day, but there was some, actually, some crap now. <laughs> uh, me too. I'll be back on an ambulance tomorrow morning, so I'll be thinking. <laughs> Paul, climb into the fucking thing. Stop climbing on top of it. This is in Mumbai. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Marsh. Legend. You know what to do. Follow him on all the usual platforms. Paul Marsh, Paul Marsh Comedian. You won't go wrong. He's the tall fella and very, very funny with puns and whatnot. So get following thank you very much for listening and of course thank you very much to, as always to the patrons if you are listening on apple Podcasts, you know what to do give it the five stars maybe a nice little rating and i think uh, to signify spring in inside the next month before we hit before we hit the summer um i'd like yeah i, I think i'm gonna pick another winner for the review ski so send me a screenshot of your review and i will send you out some prize yeah and we'll get the best review over the next five to six weeks Whoever writes the best review on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you're allowed to write on, whether it's actually over on Spreaker or it's on Acast or Podbean, wherever you're allowed to write a review or write a review in your Instagram stories. That'll do. That'll do. I'll take that on board and I'm going to send out a prize of a T-shirt. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. The last person to win the T-shirt, she's in Canada. So don't matter to me, lads, where you are. You'll win it. So best review you know what to do. Five stars over on the Apple Podcasts. Mm, other than all that, if you're not willing to become a Patreon, buy some merch, or write us a review of some sort, just share it. Just share it on your timeline or whatever platform you're on. That'd be great. Just tell some friends about it. Now, also, you know what to do if you haven't been listening to the Tom and Jerry Show. Get over there. Go find Tom and Je- the Tom and Jerry Show podcast. Jerry with a G. We're up on episode four coming out this Monday. It'll be out a little early with ad free to the Patreons, of course. And uh, go and enjoy that. We are now over on Instagram, so feel free to interact with the Instagram or the, the Twitter page. We'll be putting up bits and pieces from the show so you can actually interact with things we were talking about, the subjects we talk about, because, you know, it's, it's a kind of a magazine style show. But it would be great to have you on board now. Have a lovely Friday. Go on away. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. And you're going to hear me again on Monday, lads. Good luck. God bless. Thanks. <laughs>